Hello everyone and welcome back to another Questions of Life. Today's question will be posed by moi and I'm asking what things do you never get tired of or what things do you think you'll never get tired of? Um, today's question is going to be overlaid with some Bloodborne gameplay which is uh, it's been a fantastic game and I'm getting really into it. I love the like Resident Evil 4 kind of vibe with the villagers and uh, the the little like sneaking that you can kind of do through the game you don't have to like fight everything you don't have to face every enemy you can like walk past some you can run past some even you there's oh there's so many options anyways without further ado my answer to my own question here i've made a list of things that i haven't ever gotten tired of as of late um let's see here there's uh there's pokemon leaf green now i've played a lot of pokemon i know um Uchiha and A Warbore have played a lot of Pokemon too, but some of the games are just not as good as others. But the one Pokemon game that I can come back to and actually like go through and like enjoy moderately versus some of the older ones or even some of the newer ones that I just that just become a slog at some point because of all the cutscenes or because of the um, pacing of the game. Pokemon Leaf Green, there's very little direction on where to go. The game stays almost true to form to the original red. Uh, it's graphically improved. It ev everything. It's just a it's just a better version of Pokemon Red, by and far. And I can play that game for decades, eons. I can play that game forever and not get bored of it. Um, along the Pokemon lines too, there's po the Pokemon Adventures manga, which is in this niche of um, manga and Pokemon that scratches a very very hard to hard to get itch for me because it adds like it adds some story and uh character to the pokemon series that the mainstream games don't do so i don't think i'll ever get tired of that because i've read i've read the first arc the red blue green and yellow arc like three times now i have the that arc i have all seven of those volumes sitting on my shelf in my room because I love that particular manga so much. Uh, another thing that I don't think I'll ever get tired of is uh, JRPGs. Uh, Persona 3, Persona 5, Persona 4, 2, to an extent. If I, I'm, I'm grateful that Atlas stopped milking Persona 4, but now they're milking Persona 5. And, I mean, I did the... Come on, come on, Atlas, come on. You, you, made, you made a great game. Move on to the next one. Pull a Hideki uh, Miyazaki, Hideteka Miyazaki, and, like, move on to the next thing, okay? Like you did with uh, Demon Souls, Dark Souls, and then on to Bloodborne before they forced him to make um, Dark Souls 3 before he went even further down the shitter. Uh, I like JRPGs. I like the Tales of series. I don't think I'll ever get tired of them. If Bandai Namco actually manages to push out a new console version of a Tales game, I would pay the mo I would pay the full price for that game, even though they're the exact same. Every single Tales game has the exact same items, uh, more or less. Uh, it does the exact same things. It just has different combat and different stories every once in a while. I mean, even the combat isn't varied up all that much. It's, it's just enough to be a little bit interesting but at the same time they're almost all carbon copy pastes but I, I i still i still will play the ever-loving fuck out of those games just like the pokemon games not much changes throughout any pokemon game it's all pretty much the same battling style same gameplay but i will play i will pay the full price i will let i will let these companies take my money for these games um so another thing that i won't get tired of here uh Let's see, we went through the JRPGs, the Pokemon, um, some animes that I don't think I ever, I'll ever get tired of. Gurren Lagann, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, and along the manga side, Roni Kenshin. I don't think I'll get tired of those three particular things, because I've read the Roni Kenshin manga three times. No, not three times, two times, all the way through. And I love it. I love every second of it. Oh, it's... It's like, it's a realistic historical fiction that sets place, that takes place in an actual event that happens in Japan, but it's told in a romantic uh, way. Romantic as in, you know, um, Romani romanized type of uh, way. Uh, the use of romantic that isn't towards um, opposite sexes or like in the, in the lovey-dovey sense, you know. Um, I'm, I'm not going to explain that any further. 
I'll keep going on to the next thing because the more I try to explain it, the less, the more, the more awkward it makes this. Anyways, Roni Kenshin, um, Gurren Lagann, because I think that show is still a masterpiece. I've seen it three times over, and nothing will ever be the same as that first experience that I had with the show and watching Simone and, um, Kamina and everyone else go through all these hardships and overcome them and, like, just be freaking epic if i could like erase all of my memories and not all of my memories but all of my experience with Gurren Lagann and then rewatch the show i would because that first time was amazing and even rewatching it is still it's pretty good full malcolm's brotherhood for reasons again like the epicness i love i love it it's great i've read the manga once i've read uh, i've read the manga once and then i've watched the anime the brotherhood anime twice over I don't think I can get tired of those. Um, anime in general, I don't think I can get tired of. Because the shows like Prison School, Shimonetta, and this new one that I recently saw on Netflix called um, Sirius the Jaeger, which did all of the things that I love in stories. That I love about the Index story itself. It had a variety of different characters, and it told the story in like a bunch of different ways. There was one main character that the story kind of focused on, but... There's, like, different parts where they would focus on different characters and then it would all come together cohesively. Anyways, moving on to the rest of the list here, not talking about that in particular. Uh, I have Scrubs. Scrubs is, like, my go-to comedy background noise. I love the ever-loving shit out of that show. It combines both the drama and comedy in a nice, realistic, touching way. They're, my favorite episode is by and far, though, the Dorothy and the Wizard in Oz episode. I love it. I love it so much. It's adorable. It's a, it's a, it's a great episode. Um, now, this, exa this, this one thing might be a bit weird, this next thing I'm going to mention, which is uh, Chrono Gears walkthrough with uh, Tyrant. One uh, X, I believe, was his YouTube handle before he removed his channel, um, of Resident Evil 5. Now... It's weird because uh, Chrono isn't a very well-known YouTuber, but he was like the first one that I saw and the one that I, I wanted to like emulate. I was like, oh, hey, that looks cool. I want to like try doing that, that gameplay recording thing, and that's what got me into it. So I, uh, I, every once in a while, I'll come back and rewatch that particular playthrough because I just like how him and Tyrant are just goofing off and, you know, button heads and making fun of each other and just having fun with the game really uh so there's that another thing that i don't think i will get tired of is i i guess red versus blue anything that rooster teeth really puts out because i i want to see i want to see the new show that they put out and rooster teeth the first time i ever i ever like saw or heard of rooster teeth i thought they were like this low low budget low bar um this low bar company that not even company this youtube channel that uh that just put out like funny stuff like like machinima i guess uh how machinima like would put out all these other weird different videos i thought rooster teeth was kind of like that how they just released a whole bunch of different things and then it turned out no they're not they're way better than machinima like a thousand times better no even ten thousand times better because they made one of the one of my most favorite series that is red versus blue I have seen the entirety of Red vs. Blue three times. And once was when I made a Warbor sit down and watch all of the episodes with me. And his favorite line, one of his f favorite lines comes from that from that show. The one about Caboose thrown up on the floor. Not, not Caboose, but Tucker thrown up on the floor. And Caboose being like, come on now. Cut out the middle. You could have cut out the middle, man. Thrown it on the floor. <laughs> I just... Oh, I love that show. It's it's great. It's fantastic. Um, I mean, I don't think I'll ever get tired of food, you know, or, like, living or, you know, anything else <laughs> of that matter that I need to survive. But uh, I definitely don't think I'll get tired of uh, magic. Maybe Magic the Gathering anytime soon. Because they're still releasing new cards. And I love the art and on those cards even though i don't i can't play the game really well um usually whenever i end up winning or making winning decks it's because i've put a lot of money into 
the game and that ends up you know you get this return back of like rare cards but i couldn't make a good deck with my life i just like making theme decks and whatnot and that whole that whole like deck building itself i don't think i can get tired of doing that it's a nice hobby of mine that i like to do in my free time i don't think as well the game that's being played on the screen right now i don't think i can get tired of dark souls or anything that's really difficult like the smt series um because that that puts your skills to the test you know like dark souls it's 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 not actually super hard but if you're not focused and attentive and if you're not careful it may seem like it's very punishing but it the games are actually quite fair a lot of the times uh like big giant bosses will telegraph their moves and they'll be like hey i'm gonna hit you and if you don't get out of the way you're gonna die and then if you do not get out of the way you die and then like you can't get mad at the game because like come on it, it told you that this is gonna happen uh bloodborne is very fast paced though uh i've had I've had moments where I thought, wow, I don't think I can get a single hit in edgewise because this little girl, this whatever, this enemy is just eating my face. And then it turns out, oh, if I just do this, then wow, it becomes way easier. Like, the things, the things these games teach you, man. So, anyways, that has been my list. I'm sure there are other things that I can think of that I won't ever get tired of. Um like like books like in general like uh the percy jackson series or like just reading about mythology or manga or like in general but i gave like specific things things that i can actually go back to even though i don't like going back to things and like re reading or re-watching or like replaying uh games movies or shows or books not necessarily in that order i don't like doing that but I gave a specific list of things that I don't even care if I've played it like 10 million times I can I or seen it 10 million times or whatever. I can come back to these things and I can enjoy them like it's almost been the first time I've played it. So anyways guys, that's been it for me. Remember, drive fast, take chances.